Good morning, Marine Valley Church. I have a question for you this morning. What does true contentment look like in the Christian life? That is a question that I've been thinking a lot about lately. If I am content with the lot that the Lord has given me, how am I reflecting that contentment to those around me? That really is the question. As we find ourselves on this Thursday before Easter, I can't help but think of Christ and his portrayal of what true contentment actually looks like as he prepared for what would arguably be the most painful and demoralizing sacrifice anyone could ever give. The final hours before Jesus was arrested in the garden give us major insight into how Jesus reflected contentment in his life while facing certain death on a cross, which was a far heavier burden than anything you or I will ever have to bear. In the Gospels, specifically John chapter 13, we learn about how Jesus actually washed the feet of his disciples before the final Passover meal. And then in Matthew chapter 26, we are taken to the Garden of Gethsemane just before Jesus was arrested by the Jewish leaders. Starting in verse 36, let's read. So it's Matthew 26, starting in verse 36. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. From the way that Jesus humbled himself to the level of the lowliest servant to wash the very feet of the people that would desert him just hours later, like it says in chapter 13 of John, to how we just read in Matthew, where he painstakingly took the cup that was given by the Father and set aside his own human desires of that very cup to pass and gratefully accepted the will of the Father above his own. See, what I love about the end of the passage is that we can be assured that when we struggle to accept and understand God's will for our own lives, when we're facing the toughest situations in this human life, The questioning is not sin. See, Jesus himself dealt with all of the emotions that we feel when we're faced with the tough stuff in life. In our humanness, we may never truly understand why God has placed us in some situations, but we can be assured that his ways are far better than ours. His plan is far superior to anything we could ever plan out for ourselves. Jesus finding contentment in his last days on this earth while facing death on a cross can give us hope. Hope that we too can live with the uneasiness of it all while keeping our eyes set on who God is. 
who our Heavenly Father is and the fact that we can understand that what He has planned for us and our lives is far better than what we can imagine for ourselves. So what does that look like in your life? How is God using what he's given you and where he's placed you to reflect your contentment in the midst of uneasy situations like we find ourselves in today? When everyone around us is so uneasy and unsure of what the future holds for their lives, for the lives of people they love, so many people without hope in this risen savior. If Jesus' contentment shows me one thing, it shows me that although life as we know it, may drag us through the dirt sometimes. Our Heavenly Father is working everything out so that those who love and trust in Jesus' work on the cross can rest assured knowing that God can and will use those very situations to mold us into the image of His Son and to bless those around us as we surrender our imperfect will to His perfect will. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we surrender to your will. God, we, we understand that you are in, in complete control of where you have us today. But whatever the world is fearing, whatever they're stressing about, Lord, we know it's all in your hands. We know that you are a God who loves us, who loves his people. Jesus says we look forward to celebrating your death and resurrection this weekend, Lord. Would you give us peace knowing that you've conquered the grave and you know the end of the story. We give you all glory and honor that you're due. In Jesus' name, amen.